Okay, just in sip. So metrics in IT systems I put together, or I, I use some slides and change it a little bit, so it's very, very short. Um, yeah, the agenda is, very, is also very short. I will talk a little bit about metrics, and then uh, on the last slide of this metrics part, uh, the common stacks that are used, and in particular, where everyone, or where at least I come from, is the graphite stack. I used this for a couple of years. But it's annoying, so yeah, and we will come to that. And at the end, I will demo a little stack that I showed off on Monday, where I have a little, a couple of backends and some nice uh, relay in front, which I discovered the week before. So that's kind of kind of nice. A um, couple of words about me. I uh, work for Gaikai now. Who knows Gaikai? No one knows Gaikai. It's uh, the PlayStation now um, part of Sony. So we are writing or we are. Um, operating the PlayStation Now backend, which is a games, video game streaming of Sony. Video game streaming is kind of YouTube without caching and controller feedback, so you have a loop that you have to rely on. So if someone moves a controller to the left, then you have to react to it. So it's basically Netflix with more constraints. Anyway, um, metrics. <coughs> there are a couple of metrics formats. So first of all, metrics are distinct uh, data points where you have a, a time a value and some key. So it could be CPU usage uh, and the now, and so how is the, is the CPU usage now basically? And this over time, right? So you have it from now, you have it in five seconds, and then in 10 seconds, and 15 seconds, and this data points you can draw on a, on a, on a chart, and then you have uh, a little nice chart about your CPU usage. So this is the basic metric, right? So it's a distinct data point with a with a key uh, in time. And I think uh, Paul might have a, a, better, a better explanation and a longer one uh, and a more vivid one, but basically that's why, what it is, right? Key value time size. Um, the carbon interface, which is the uh, interface or the, the, the yeah, maybe the, the parent of all the other interfaces or formats is very simple. It's like key value timestamp. So key is uh, a dot notated pass. So it could be system dot CPU dot usage or user or a system. So it's like the um, identifier, then the value is a float or an integer, and timestamp is just an epoch, so a, a Unix timestamp. Um, OpenTSDB and Influx, they, are, they have similar interface or similar formats for this uh, string um, format. Uh, they have a key as well, and then you could annotate different tags. So for instance, uh, for for key, could be, it could be CPU usage, and the tag might be the host, and the data center it's in, or the application that is the main application on the server, so you can have different uh, tags associated with this timestamp. And this is nice at the end, because you can search for tags, and then you can see all the metrics from this particular system, which has the, system, uh, the tag host equals computer one. So for searching, it's very easy. But this, I think, uh, all my cover a little bit. And uh, so OpenTCB Influx looks similar. Matrix 2.0, it's something from Dieter Platini. Uh, yeah, he proposes a new format uh, which looks similar to the uh, ones above, um, but it lacks the, the key, basically. It just consists out of tags and uh, keys and values of tags. So that you describe. Um, and I think I have a here, here I have a, a slide about this. So the the one above would be how you describe the key or how you describe uh, a system in <laughs> console. Uh, in console. <coughs> so you have the, the agent collect D, it's on the system DFS1. The, uh, the file, file system is uh, the DF, I think. It's a, just the identifier for a file, for a file system. Then you have the, the mount point, server node, DFS10. And then you have some other some some notations, df complex, whatever complex is, mm -hmm. maybe it's uh, the type. And used is uh, that you have the megabytes used for the system. But this, as I'm struggling to explain it, it's not obvious, right? So everyone can come up with his own format. And uh, what he proposes in Metrics 2.0 is that you that you have just a JSON blob uh, with keys and values, and this this they are, they are very descriptive about the metric, right? So you have this space. On this mount point, the unit is bytes, which you cannot tell from the above metric key, and so on. So the type is used, and so on and so on. And this is what 
he proposes he has some tools that um, support this, but yeah, it's not not yet there. But I think it's fairly similar with what uh, InfluxDB and OpenTSDB and all this stuff that you have tags associated with a different metric. Okay, and um, the performance metrics or the the the, um, the system you need to to uh, organize metrics is that you need a source, okay? So it could be collect D or whatnot, and they should uh, communicate metrics via a common uh, format. So this would be the carbon format, which all the other backends uh, understand. So everyone uh, exposes an endpoint there where you can send this simple string. Um, the metrics engine could be carbon, so carbon would be the, the grandparent, as I said. Uh, here you could put InfluxDB or OpenTCB as well, um, which is in charge of getting the metrics, then caching it in RAM and flushing it to disk, or in the in InfluxDB case, also organizing it and aggregating it and such things, relaying it maybe. And you need a front end. So Grafana uh, is uh, the most used, uh, or it's, it's maybe the de facto standard nowadays. Graphite Web was used to be the de facto standard because it's bundled with graphite, the graphite ecosystem. But it's Django and it's server-side uh, rendering of shards, so it's a little bit ugly and it's a little bit slow due to these two facts. And Grafana is an HTML5 client sign rendering AM web front end, which is uh, much nicer. And the graphite API is just uh, the API, the RESTful API to access metrics uh, the backend could be InfluxDB, it could also be Carbon, and I'm not sure about other backends for Car Graphite API, but I think maybe also OpenTCB could be, but I'm not sure. Okay, so you need this basically. You need the source, someone who sends you metrics, you need a uh, metrics engine that takes this metrics, stores it to disk, and provides uh, uh, access to the metrics somehow. You could use middleware like Graphite API to provide this. Most metrics engines like InfluxDB and OpenTSDB, they have uh, some uh, RESTful API or some endpoint where you can query for metrics. Um, Carbon does not. And you need a front end where you can display it. Right? That's pretty straight. Yeah, and then I have some, some stuff there. InfluxDB? Yes. Even there, if, if I wrote Carbon there. Yeah, and here I explained a little bit about the Carbon engine, but I think we can. We can so fast over it. So carbon cache is a Python daemon, um, which is uh, only one core, and it, uh, it consumes strings or, or pickle events like Python structure, uh, and it persists this data in RD files. So not RD tool files. It's a whisper or series, which is uh, an implementation of RD files. It's a little bit better than RD tool. But since it's all POSIX files, it's uh, cumbersome to scale because you have millions of files eventually if you have millions of metrics and it's like, yeah, not very, very scalable maybe at the end. Yeah, and as I said, I, I don't want to, um, to uh, elaborate much more on it. And you have different, um, different demons there, cover relay, relays, as the name suggests, the aggregator, Carbon aggregator should call it an aggregator, so it's also the same. And yeah, I, 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 I take the slides from another presentation, so I think we can skip it. This carbon relay and GA will show this is a, a web UI file format. Yada, yada. Yeah, alternatives. I mean, InfluxDB is not on there, but we are on the InfluxDB uh, back uh, meetup, so uh, InfluxDB you could use RD tool. Maybe you shouldn't because it's old and no one wants to deal with it anymore. Uh, but I saw, as I said, just kidding, but I saw things, so I saw... Um, an, uh, yeah, I don't want to go to, down this red hole. Uh, HBase you could also use, or Cassandra, or RDBS, some MySQL self-made uh, store for metrics. But um, as maybe Paul will point out what the challenges are if you store um, metrics, as, as we, we discussed earlier, or why not use etcd for a backend for metrics? I mean, you could argue that you could put uh, one data point in one key in etcd, but then you, you have the key for uh, one key for each data point, and this might not scale very good. So what you want to have, you want to have 
uh, some meta information and, and Carbon, for instance, is a very, or Whisper is a very good example of this. So this is RRD file, but uh, the RRD file has a 60 byte header that says, okay, what is the, what is the um, roll up time, what is the, the period of the different buckets, so to speak, right? So if you have, a, let's say, the CPU um, metric that I talked about, the <coughs> CPU usage, so this would be one data point every five seconds. In this header of the whisper file, you, it will say, okay, I have a five <laughs> seconds interval, and then I want to have uh, maybe 1440 um, buckets, which would be 24 hours, maybe. Maybe not. I think so. But anyway, you have like two, uh, 1440 buckets, and each bucket represents a five second offset. And then you do not have to store the key of each bucket, so the timestamp of each bucket, because you can just count the buckets and then say, okay, each bucket has five minutes seconds offside, and then you just need the starting point in the metadata, and then you can just iterate through the stream. And this is a very efficient way of storing in a file, at least, storing the information. Um, what Whisper lags, but this is, yeah, Whisper pre allocates all the buckets when you create a Whisper file. This is some how uh, one of the downsides of Whisper, if you have a, a Whisper file that stores two years of five second interval data, then it will allocate, I don't know, a couple of hundred megabytes or gigabytes even, without even setting or without even storing one single data point. It's just pre-allocating all the information. So that's kind of the very downside of, of, um, of the carbon uh, backend. And yeah, tools like InfluxDB or Cassandra HBase, they don't need this pre-allocation. So, but I am not an expert, and I, I think I'm, I hopefully I got most of it right. But Paul White <laughs> will correct me on the backend side, I guess, uh, with his slides. Yeah, and now just a small demo. Um, I will skip over the console part and the ALK part as well. Uh, I think. Um, what I what I'm using a lot is uh, Docker, and I provided. Can you see this as well, Paul? Yeah. But yeah, I, I can see it. Ah, yeah. you can Sorry, see this as well, right? Yeah. So, um, ah, maybe I should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's, by the way, the the GitHub link to to get this example. So, okay. So I have the carbon and E. So what I got here is, and I, do I have to talk about Docker and Compose and stuff? Everyone knows Docker. So it's just VirtualBox on steroids, and this uh, file here, it's like Vagrant on steroids, where you just describe the different virtual machines, so the different Docker containers, but let's call them virtual machines for now, and uh, you can create multiple of those in this file and you can link them together. So I have one console uh, machine, I have a carbon machine, I have a graphite API machine, and I have a Grafana machine here, and I have a carbon relay machine. And if I, have, if I fire up this magic command, which I mistyped, so compose up minus D, it will create those two of uh, those machines here. And if I move, here to the browser again. Here we go. Stop. This is console. Should be console. I see that these different nodes are starting and eventually all services are up and running. <coughs> <coughs> The tests are every 10 seconds. Let's assume that they're already there. So ah, here we go. Oh, the most important one is not there yet. But we can look at the Grafana one. <coughs> Oh no, what happened? 
Okay, that's obviously I didn't pray to the live demo god. Yeah, he failed. What did he fail? Yeah, we go. <coughs> there was some issue. I don't see issue. Free on the way. Better now? Yeah. He's in the family now. Okay, so console. <coughs> let's assume everyone knows console. It's just the uh, Nagios on steroids, kind of, and makes a lot of fun to use. Anyway, and um, so this is Carbon Relay NG, and I have uh, Carbon as a backend, and ah, here we go. So as I said, I have five nodes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, five nodes, and um, they are basically virtual machines. They are sending um, metrics via Diamond. Diamond is Collect D in Python and a little bit more lightweight than Collect D, but I use it for too little, too much, uh, too too long now. Maybe I should look for something else. But it's just like Collect D in Python, and I think Collect D also is very uh, very good for for uh, sending stuff to to Carbon or to any backend. So maybe I should switch. But anyway, um, this is the metrics that are in the Carbon interface or in the Carbon backend. And the carbon backend looks like like this. It's a valid carbon whisper. And then we have the whisper files. And the whisper files are organized um, in this key. As said, we have uh, this key consists of uh, dot, not, dot separated passes. So if it's, it's like servers dot, and then the name of the, of the node, Grafana, for instance, and then dot network. ETH zero and I show this in the in the other one as well. Uh, Eric's bytes. So this is a whisper file for the the received bytes for this specific interface on this specific host. And if I do fetch here and I, I tail it, then we see we have the the epoch, so the, the Unix timestamp, and the value that's sent by the daemon. Alright? And just to show you that I'm not cheating, if I send a random value with the current <coughs> timestamp to the carbon service, Now we have this new car whisper file, which was created by the carbon demon. Right, so I send test test with a random value. If I do whisper fetch here on this one, then we see that this is a value. If I do it again, then we have another value. So and it's five, five seconds interval, right? So this is the simplest, I think, uh, backend that you can have because everyone knows POSIX files, everyone knows how to deal with POSIX files, but if you have a lot of POSIX files, everyone hates POSIX files. So, yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's that. Um, uh, yeah, where is my here? So, these are the different uh, values for the different backends, and now we add InfluxDB. So, I go to add Influx. Now we have another. Uh, compose file which starts the influx db node and links it to the and this is actually a typo but it links it to the console cluster and it uh, provides some more information so if I do compose up here compose up minus d it starts the influx node 
the influx node now appears in console. And it even appears here in the metrics. So now, here we go. There's the influx node. It appears in the console web UI. And we have a new service here, influxDB. Should be green someday. Here. And here we have now the, the routing. So you see the, the bottom there. We have carbon and the carbon daemon. And uh, if I reload and, uh, oh wait, I have to pray. So, ta-da. Now since this service registers to console, console recreates the configuration of this relay daemon, carbon relay ng, which has a web UI, a nice one. And then it restarts the daemon. So um, if we have this new backend, then it will be included in the configuration, the service is restarted or the configuration is reloaded, and then we have now two backends for our metrics system, right? So we still have all metrics here in uh, the backend of uh, Carbon, but we also have now uh, InfluxDB cluster, oh, cluster, not just one node, but... And, um, I have two databases, I think. One graphite, one open TSDB. And if I show all the measurements, then I see that all the measurements are in here. So this <coughs> like the simple version of uh, matrix format, it's just the key. And uh, yeah, I have all the information is here as well. And, and you use a relay engine to send it to both uh, yeah. ends? Yeah, but I just discovered it the other day. so. It's kind of very neat. Um, yeah, you could have um, routings where you match a prefix or you match a substring or you match a regex, so you can have different backends for different um, yeah, usages. So, but I haven't played around with it much. I just discovered it. Last, I like the idea of having this web, uh, web UI anyway. And this can aggregate also. And uh, yeah, but, but as I said, it's fairly new to me. And uh, now I'm, I'm going to spin up another host, uh, a new Grafana version, because the old one is not that handy with my InfluxDB setup. So I just create another Grafana node, but this time I use Grafana 2. The, this one is Grafana 1.9, and Grafana 2 is a little bit more, more shiny. I have the same metrics, since I can access now the Grafana backend and the InfluxDB backend. So this is a Grafana one. It looks quite similar to, if I take 15 seconds. So anyone sees a difference here? Shouldn't be. So this is um, also the same same information. And now I change to the InfluxDB one. And now I got the same information as well. Since uh, I started InfluxDB only a couple of minutes ago, I have less information, but that proves the fact that I have two backends basically. Yeah, and this is uh, this it. And, and, and if I now kill the carbon, it's just just I haven't tried it before. But since I prayed to the god, I can just kill carbon and kill graphite API. And now I should so now wait. So now carbon and graphite API, they are gone. They should. The, yeah, they are kicked out of the carbon relay because the service changed and then uh, the template creates a new config file and restarts the service. And now I'm not able to use Grafana anymore because he says, yeah, he says nothing. Yeah, he cannot access it because it's gone. And now I only have InfluxDB left. Maybe you should do the same thing. Oh. Spinning wheel, no chance. Yeah, and um, and that's how easy it is. It is and um, when I look into any of those, and this is so, and the same I did for here. I did it like this, right? So random 
and as I said, all the backends they support this very simplistic way of sending metrics. Influxdb dot service dot console. Hmm. Can And see it's not found. Perfect. Yeah, I guess you believe me if I. Yeah, but you will believe me if I now send the metrics to InfluxDB, they will appear on Influx as well. What I, what I, yeah, I mean, Paul will, will shortly explain more about InfluxDB. Um, as I said, what I dislike about, or what everyone dislikes about Garfield, I think, is the POSIX files floating around and you have to make take care of the of them you have to remove old files by hand or very it's kind of some what I um, like is that you have a lot of functions that you can apply to metrics and then uh, aggregate them on the fly so it's very easy and the same uh, goes for InfluxDB as well you, you can have a lot of functions applied I think it's a little bit cumbersome if you use the old format because you cannot leverage all the cool fancy things that are in Influx, so all this tagging and the, the different tags like key value um, that you will put into Influx uh, and you cannot use if you just use a simple stupid uh, keys I use. That's one reason why I, I haven't shifted to Influx, I think, because I'm, I'm just plain stupid what, because of this keys, but this might change in the future. Anyway. And uh, I think this carbon relay, since it's from the guy that, that created this metrics 2.0 stuff, uh, this is able of, of receiving uh, stupid or my metrics and then transform them to uh, the key value format that is more favorable in the other backends. Yeah, so that was, um, I guess, pretty rapid. <laughs> um,